Well, 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 welcome back to my channel, everyone. I am doing another respiratory video, and it has been quite a while since I've done a respiratory video. So, today I will be talking about, you know, basically like a six month update because I've been a respiratory therapist for about seven or eight months, ma'am. So I've been a respiratory therapist for about seven months, I believe, maybe eight. I'm not sure. I don't feel like doing the math right now, but it's basically like a six month update because six months sounds a lot better than seven. I have been officially a respiratory therapist for quite a while now. And if you don't know, I am an RRT, registered respiratory therapist. I took two tests and it got me to have that title. So I'm Elena Kostopoulos. RRT. So I have learned so much in the past months that I have been working. When I tell you I have not learned so much ever in my life, I haven't. I literally go to work and I learn something new every day, I swear. This past week, I was in the ER for the first time in quite a while and I learned so much again. Just know if you're going into like a medical field, you are going to learn so much information every day, basically and it's gonna better improve your patient skills to where you can help your patients better. Overall, I really do enjoy respiratory therapy. I have had a very highs and very lows. <laughs> Cause you're, I mean, you're constantly working with critical patients and you're constantly working with people that are sick. So you're gonna have high highs and low lows, but you know, overall it's been pretty good. So as a respiratory therapist, I have worked the floors, I have worked the ER and I've worked the ICUs and I have done a lot in the past couple months. Have to say I do have a favorite place that I like to work. Everyone say it with me. Ready? One, two, three, ICU! Yeah, I really do like working in the ICU. I enjoy being able to work with people that are on ventilators or that are critical to where I can help them better improve. I also like being in a unit in the ICU because I know these patients. I got a report on them this morning. I was able to talk with a couple nurses. I know who the doctor is that's running the ICU. Like I like being able to know exactly who I'm working with and you learn certain physicians like certain things. You learn how different nurses work. You learn a lot. So the ICU is like the place I like to go personally. Like I like being in the ER, but I feel like when I'm not in the ER all the time or like in a long time, I feel like I lose like some of my ER skills because it is different than working in the ICU. Like the ER is like fast paced, fast paced, which is fine. But when you haven't done the ER in so long, it feels weird. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. More of an ICU girl, I don't know. And then you get to learn the nurses that are also usually there in your shift. So then you have like people that you know or people that you work with all the time. So like, I, I don't know, I like the ICU. I also really like my shift. I have gotten so close with my shift because you're literally with the people that you work with so much. You're with them for 12, plus hours a day. You're with them for a very long time. And I feel like you like go through the trenches with them. They are your people. They are the people that you try to go help when you can. They will come help you when you can. Y'all are just in it together. So I feel like it's like a close little bond that I made with people on my shift, which I really, really love my shift. So if you're on my shift, faves. Okay, let's backtrack a little bit. Let's talk about how I got to the point where I am comfortable enough to work on my own. So if you don't know, my orientation was about 12 weeks. I was trained by literally the best person ever. She literally taught me so much and still does. Like I still learned every single day that I'm at work. So yeah, I was with her and basically how it worked was we would go to work. I would be with her or she would be with me and we would work together and she would basically teach me all the ropes. We were in the ER together. We were in the ICU together and we have multiple ICUs. So we were in all of the ICUs together. We would have things come up. We would have codes. We would have emergent intubations. We would have all these things that we would have to, well, she would have to teach me while we, you know, everything's going on, but it worked out very well. And I've gotten to the point where I can work on my own now. Now, in saying I work on my own doesn't mean I know how to do everything and I don't know everything about everything and I still have questions. That's 
where it's nice having people on my shift that have been there a while because I can call them and ask questions and I mean they might get annoyed with me sometimes but like they are like the best and they don't they like it's never been a problem they're really great and they will answer any question that I have I am just very grateful for everyone on my shift and everyone that has helped me through this process of me getting to where I am now. So yes, that was my orientation experience. Now I work on my own. I've worked on my own for a very extended period of time and it's been good. I've had, you know, I've had good days. I've had bad days. I've had awful days and I've had great days. You know, like sometimes it's just, this dog is so needy. Sometimes, you know, you're not gonna have a great day at work all the time. You're not gonna have a bad day at work all the time. It just depends on how it's going, really. Like, you're gonna have your good days, you're gonna have your bad days. You're gonna have your days where some days you're not gonna have a lunch break. Some days you're gonna have to call for help. Like, you're only one person. And I just want everyone that's going into this field to know that you are able to ask for help. Like, if you have critical patients, you have an ICU, you have multiple critical patients, right? Multiple people on ventilators. You're only one person and you're only able to do as much as you can. Just know that you will make it through those days and you will be stronger for it. So as a respiratory therapist, in case you wanted to know, in case you're going into this field, your typical day is kind of gonna look like this. So you go into work, you clock in, we have like a morning huddle, and then you will go up to your unit or wherever you're working and you will get report from the night shift because I'm day shift. So I get report from night shift and then I sit down, I plan out my day, I write what times I'm going to each patient. Sometimes you can't follow the times, obviously, because if an emergency happens. So I write down everything that I need, I write down what time my treatments are due, I write down what time my other therapies are due, and I plan it out. So then, when it's time for me to go up, I go up to my unit, I, you know, assess each patient, you know, go patient by patient, and then I, you know, Go, out, go throughout my day, I do my treatments, I talk to physicians, I talk to the nurses, I try to do my best, and it's all you can do. Sometimes you're gonna have like codes and stuff that you can't control, but guess what? You're just gonna have to make it work, and time management is key in this job. I don't care what anyone says. That's like the, one of the most important things is time management in this job, and you're just gonna have to figure out how to get all your work done while you're also making sure that your patients are getting the best care. Another note that I would like to add if you're going into this field is make sure that you're like I wouldn't say a people person but make sure you're like happy with what you're doing because imagine you're sick in the hospital and someone comes in and they are just like the most nasty most down person you've ever met and like you're already feeling bad you're already sick and who knows what else is going on and you just want you know your respiratory therapist your nurse your physician to be nice and like kind to you so if you're going into this field don't go into it if you're not like gonna be nice to your patients also i would say you kind of have to have tough skin for this job just know that you're gonna have days where you're gonna be talking to a patient and then you think everything's fine and then the next thing you know they code and that could be hard sometimes and just know that you are a human and you are able to feel your emotions and you can have a heart that's why i say you have to have kind of tough skin because i mean you're seeing people at their highs and you're seeing people at their very lows and you see you know some patients don't make it and that makes it hard sometimes so i'm just saying that's why i'm saying you have to have kind of tough skin not 100 percent, but you know what i mean so i would say basically to recap a lot of what i've already said i know this video is all over the place but like i'm just trying to get thoughts across that i feel like it's useful to anyone that's going into the field or wants to know more about the field as respiratory you are going to do a lot of intubations you're going to do a lot of extubations you will be dealing with blood i mean you're going to be dealing with mucus and sputum so if you don't like that maybe don't go into the field you are going to see some crazy things, especially in the ER. You know, you have traumas come in and do what you got to do. It's going to be difficult sometimes. You're going to see some crazy things, but you're going to have to stand there and do it. So I would say overall for my six months, seven months of working as a respiratory therapist, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I have learned 
so much information that I never knew I needed to know. You know, you learn all this stuff in school, but like once you really start applying yourself and applying those things that you have learned, it's insane. I also wanna say, if you're in your first couple weeks of orientation or if you're in your first couple weeks working by yourself and you feel just like overwhelmed and stressed, just know that I was there, I was, I was you and I got through it. So literally if I can get through it, you can get through it and I just want you to know that everything will be okay. So yeah, being a respiratory therapist has been a whirlwind. It has been good, it has been bad. But overall, I would say the good outweighs the bad. And I would say the best part of me going and working in the hospital is being able to, you know, help patients. I have been like in situations where patients do yell at you sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes people just don't feel good and they just like don't want your like, I'm here to help. Like sometimes it'll be like that and sometimes you just kind of have to deal with it but most of the time i have had great interactions with patients i've even like seen patients multiple times and if you leave a good impression most of the time they remember you like i don't like seeing patients in the hospital multiple times but it's nice when they remember you and like family members remember you and they like thank you for everything you've done for their family member or the patient thanks you for everything that you've done it's just it's a nice feeling, you know, and I feel like that's like my main reward for working. When family members and patients just are so thankful for everything that you do for them, that's like, it's my thing. I love that. I love that I make people feel good or feel better. I had a couple questions that I kind of wanted to answer that were left on other videos, so I'm going to answer a few of them. So the first question that I got was, I'm kind of squeamish and I don't really like blood and gore and I just want to know how often you encounter blood and gore and also they asked is it something you get used to so yeah you're gonna see a lot of blood gore sometimes I would say more in the traumas I see a lot of like gore but like blood you're gonna see that a lot I mean I do ABGs so I I literally like you know poke a needle in someone and blood comes up. I see blood all the time. Like that's just like a thing at work, you know? You work in a hospital, you're gonna see blood. Is it something you get used to? Yes, the things that I have gotten used to literally blows my mind. So if you don't like blood and gore, I'm not sure this is the field for you or any hospital field in general because like nurses, doctors, respiratory, like everyone sees blood. You could get used to it, but if you're really squeamish, I wouldn't really go into this field because it is quite a lot of blood, sputum, gore, you know? So I got a question that I thought was like interesting because I never got asked this question before. It was, is there a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to respiratory therapists? I would say there's a good amount, like you'll have to transfer patients from bed to bed with the help of nurses when you go to like a ct scan or an mri you'll have to move them from the table to the bed or the bed's table i also sometimes have to prone patients normally respiratory just stands at the head of the bed to make sure the tube doesn't move so i mean people's heads are kind of heavy but i wouldn't say it's like a major heavy lifting thing the only other heavy thing that we lift it, well, we don't lift them. We push around these ventilators, but they have wheels. I mean, but like, I wouldn't say it's like heavy lifting. So I guess there's a little bit, but there are other people that could help you. I wouldn't like worry too much about the heavy lifting thing. Another question that I got asked was, do I use like a lot of different types of ventilators? We use one ventilator in my hospital. Um, we use transport vents, but like those again are the same ones that you use over and over. We have MRI vents that we used, but like I, we don't have variety of ventilators in my hospital and we don't really typically use extra ones unless there's a big pandemic and we have to borrow ventilators. We all know about that. So no, normally we just work with one and it's enough working with one because there's a lot to it. A lot of questions that I get on my videos about like my respiratory videos is about how did I pass the TMC? I literally have a whole video dedicated to how I passed the TMC clinical sims. So if you wanna go watch that video, it's literally my channel. You could just click videos on my channel and then click 
popular and it's probably one of the first ones because that's one of my top videos. I would recommend go watching that if you want to know how I passed the TMC. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it gave a little bit more insight to how I have been doing for the past six to seven months of working as a respiratory therapist in the hospital. I will answer any other questions that people have. I am down to tell you all the ins and outs. And I hope that you're all having a great year. Are we making this year our year? We better be. So thank you for watching this video. If you like it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And let me know if you have any other questions. I am down to answer any questions. Just leave them on this video and maybe we could do a part two because I know this video is all over the place. But look, I'm trying to make a respiratory video for y'all because y'all love my respiratory videos and I'm trying to give more insight but I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again so let me know what other questions you have and thank you so much for 300 subscribers by the way and I'll see you guys next time bye